So what you do with this is you, with the sewing system, you pop that filter needle in. It maintains the integrity so it's never open to wear, so your risk of infection is lower. So you remain, maintain a closed system as much as possible. So the filter needle's there. The vacuum is now gone. And then we will, this is again unique to this system. So you've got a filter. It's a 50 micron filter, which actually uh, helps filter out anything that you don't want. And again, we're gonna take off the PPP fraction. And with a 22 mil tube, there should be about 12, 13 mils in there. So you leave it in there. So it, stop, it gives you one free hand. And you place this carefully down. Just go down as far as you think you need. And for this particular one, you're gonna to have to take off quite a lot of the plasma. So if there's about 12 in there, you're taking about 10 off and leaving two behind. So that gives you a ratio of mixing of the solid of about five to five to one, five to one. So I just want to have a slightly better look at it. And what you can do is just tip it if you need to a little bit, just to make sure you get. And I've got ten there now. I think I'm happy with that. So there's 10 in here. So you extract that, get rid of some of your air. And then cap goes on to this to keep it all sealed and sterile. So sterile cap, 10 mils, and that goes into your heater. That's it, it's so 10 minutes in there. Okay, and the Difference between the system, you'll have seen the lovely gold plasma. Uh, it's, you've got no contamination of red cells. You don't want red cells in there. Red cells create apoptosis, cell death. They create inflammation. There's a small chance that as you get the breakdown of the red cells, you can create hemocidrin staining. So actually you can generate uh, pigmentation in your patient, which can take quite a long time then or retreatments to get rid of. So you don't want red cells in if you can help it uh, because it's got nothing beneficial for, for skin in it. Um, but your, uh, you've, what you get left with now in this tube is a very, very rich PRP. So this two mils that's left, uh, giving us a 22 mil whole blood tube and you retain around about 85 to 90% of your platelets. That's nearly all of them. Again, a very high yield and high efficiency system. You uh, uh, are, have got a PRP in here now that is around about tenfold, eight to tenfold concentrated in these two mils that are left behind. So we're between eight to tenfold concentrated. So, you know, quite, quite rich. It's absolute dosing. If you've gone fourfold, because um, it's something people should know. As a clinician, you should know dosing. Uh, it's like any drug, you know, you should know if you're giving someone a gram of paracetamol or giving them 100 milligrams. Uh, so, uh, you know, or for your blood pressure pill. And it's the same with this. This is a treatment. It's a medical grade treatment. So if somebody actually asks you how many platelets have you put into somebody, you should have an idea. Um, and we know that if you go up to about um, fourfold concentration, uh, average patient's blood count is about 250 thousand platelets per microliter. Um, a fourfold concentration means you're now dealing with about a million platelets per microliter, which then gives you a dose of about a billion platelets per mil of injection. If you're then putting five in, you're giving the patient a total dose of five billion platelets. And, and uh, you know, like I said, any, any responsible clinician should actually know that, not, not have to guess it. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, it doesn't take very long, probably a couple of seconds. So uh, I do it a lot and then you're going to leave this on the side and you'll redo that because the platelets will settle again. They'll settle a little bit just by it being sat on the side for another six minutes while this is um, uh, forming. So the, this will turn into a solid, I can feel the heat off that block, so just be careful about that. But it's starting to get cloudy already, but it's not a solid yet. Um, so that's the resuspension step. So I think people should, you know, you have to know the product you're using. Uh, IPRF uh, is definitely not, definitely does not have more platelets in it than PRP. 
uh, it depends on the PLP. Okay, so if you compare uh, a PRF or an injectable PRF to uh, a poor PLP, it may well have more platelets in it. If you compare it to a high-quality PLP, like this system, there's no way it has more platelets in it. We've, we've analyzed that in our labs and we know that's not true. Uh, you can't really get a buffy coat that will give you more platelets than this system. Not without double spinning and triple spinning, as I described to you before. So uh, you get yeah, a high-purity PLP, no red cell contamination, minimal leukocytes, no neutrophils, the granulocytes are pro-inflammatory or pushed out of the system. Uh, you, and so you end up with a really high pure purity PLP with monocytes that are retained and we explain the advantage of monocytes because they're anabolic and pro-regeneration and they drive the platelets to work harder uh, and they help the signaling effects between the cells that you're working with um, and they also op to upregulate stem cell responses quite significantly when they're present. So this has been in for 10 minutes now. It comes out, you can see it's a solid, no movement. Lovely, clear, yellow color. No contamination with red cells or anything that you don't want. So that's your PPP fraction that's now your uh, solid matrix scaffold. And that just needs to cool now. So we're gonna pop it into the fridge to allow it to cool, take about eight minutes and it'll be ready. Just measuring temperature, it's come out of the uh, fridge. It's been in for about eight or nine minutes. Uh, and temperature is perfectly fine. It's below what we need it to be. It needs to be under 40. Uh, it's actually measuring about 36 at the moment. So we're going to mix it now. So what we do now is we do the resuspension again, just because the platelets will have settled in those 10 minutes, intervening 10 minutes. We've already mixed them here, but they'll have settled down. So we're just resuspending again. You don't have to do uh, quite as much of it this time around. And we will pop this off. And what I will do is pop it, as I mentioned to you, get the the total volume will be above 10 mils and 10 mils syringes will actually hold 11 to 12 but that's still not enough actually for this particular product so get, get a 20 mil just to stop you worrying about it and there's a little tip of this just hold, as you're pulling back on this needle to, to draw all of this out I tend to hold on to the, uh, the lid stop you having accidents So, move that out of the way. That's our now very rich PLP. Yeah, eight to 10 fold concentration. Okay, and we remove that, leave it behind. So we don't need that. Connector, so sterile connector between the two syringes. You take this cap off. Lovely yellow plasma, no red cells, no contamination. You push the solid across because it's a bit easier. And then you do this mixing step and you can see it homogenizes. So it becomes smoother and smoother as you, as you keep going along. And you do that as much as you need to, to get a nice smooth texture. You tend to find it becomes easier to do once you're at about 10. Is there a minimum? I don't know if they mention one, but I, I just keep going again. Like, like everything, I try, probably slightly overdo it. I just keep going until I feel it's nice and smooth and it's jetting. Extrusion force is pretty consistent. And you end up with this lovely, almost milky honey. Is the way I sort of describe it honey profilo. <laughs> but you know, it's sort of uh, that sort of texture. And it is similar to profilo in its texture. And if you ever play with profilo, and that is. Yeah, 13 to 14, almost 14 mils of product there. 13 and a half mils of product. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot of product. So store all of that in there, take that off, and then you decant into your one mil syringes. And because the extrusion force is quite high, you do need to, I, my, I, I prefer to use these one mil syringes because they give you the pressure that you need to actually um, treat more precisely. You can do it, and we have got away with it, we can use the two mils, two mil lure locks, which I've got, so you can actually try the two, but I prefer these, uh, precision's better, because the pressure's, you, you've got more control over the pressure. And that's it really, so we're almost ready for treatment. Mm -hmm.